Okay. Class four, question three. You had you had a chance to look at, I believe, question two. D, isn't it? Oh, C. Sorry, C. Yeah. Okay, something like this will come in question five. Okay, then we'll, we'll not go back to it now. Let's read question three. Suppose that a researcher, researcher collects data on houses that have sold in a neighborhood over the past year and oh, <laughs> thank you. over the year and obtains the regression results in the table shown on page four. So you have that table, don't you? Let me open it and myself. While you're reading it, I'll open and and we'll then have a quick discussion of that. It has to be really quick so that we can we can do more question fives. Sorry, class five. Teaching. Where did I put it? Well, everything is. Here it is. Uh, how do we make it? Full screen. Okay, that's not working. View. Full screen. No. Zoom. Zoom. Am I missing anything here? Full screen. Okay. Now this needs to go back in. Right. So here we go. Everyone. Using the results, so I'm reading A now, using the results in column one. So we have four different four different equations. One, two, three, four. Using the results in column one, what is the expected change in price of building a five hundred square feet foot addition to a house? So if you are extending a house, let's say you have a house, and you 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 added five hundred square foot to that house and the an average effect we're looking at here. What's that effect? Look at column one. Yeah, which number? <laughs> there are quite a few. Right, yes. So you multiply 500 by this number, 0 0.0042. So it's a triple zero forty-two. And this will give you the average effect of adding 500 square foot to the house holding everything else constant yeah it's a multiple regression model now when you write this in your exam paper you have to pay attention to the units of measure price is in pounds yeah if you read this question below this table is the definitions of variables so price is a sale price in pounds size of a house is in square feet bedrooms the number of bedrooms pool is a dummy variable if a house had a has a as a pool it will take one, otherwise zero. If the house has a good view through the windows, then you have one, otherwise zero. If the house condition is excellent, then you have one for that variable, otherwise zero. So basically, pool, view, and condition are control variables. We are interested in this coefficients, basically. First three coefficients, uh, variable size, ln size, ln size squared. And we'll come to that later. Now, when you have, by the way, notes that the variable is, dependent variable is ln price, not the price. And independent variable is size, not ln size. So these are important points also. So how would you interpret log lin model like this? Log lin relationship. So you have a log, log, log lean relationship in this case. So basically you have a size oh, sorry not going well. You have size here size and this is ln why is ln? ln price it's not just price so you, your relationship 
the variables have a different relation yeah, and a different interpretation as a result. So how would you interpret a result, coefficient estimate of a log a lean model? <laughs> yeah. No? Anyone? Do you remember from your class, uh, lectures, lecture notes maybe? If it's a lean lean, yeah, unit increase gives you a unit increase in, in the dependent variable, yeah? What if there's a unit increase in size? What is the effect on, on the price? Yeah, it is, but with a percentage sign, yeah? yeah? Log lean is a unit increase in size leads to a percentage increase in prices. Yes. So a square foot increase in size will give us this much of an increase in log price. But if you're looking at the price, not log price, then times this by 100%. You get 0 0.42, yeah, 42 percent, 0 0.042 percent increase in price. Yes, so that's the log lean interpretation of log lean model. Or comment on the log lean model in your exam, in case this is about an exam thing. Now this is about 500 square foot increase. Yeah, so we told about 500 square foot. So this will lead to us, uh, lead to uh, 0 0.21, which, if times by 100, gives us 21% increase in the price. So the in full interpretation is this. On average, 500 foot increase in size of the house will have a 25, uh, sorry, will increase the prices by 21%, holding everything else constant. Yeah, Ceteris Paribus, or Ceteris Paribus, whatever it is. What, how, how do you, is it Ceteris Paribus? You, because sometimes I see people saying Ceteris Paribus. <laughs> is it Ceteris Paribus, yeah? Holding everything else constant. Other factors constant in the regression. Okay, next. Construct a 95% confidence interval for the percentage change in price. Well, this is percentage change in price. So you times the confidence interval by 500. And this is about 95%, so it's 1.96 times the standard error of this coefficient estimate. One more zero, well, very tiny value, right? So this is a very significant variable. So how would you percentage here You times the result by 100% in the end, at the end. Well, sorry, in the end. I keep saying in the end. Let's say in the exam you could you could leave it like this in fractions, but obviously you're looking at log linear models, so time is it by hundred percent. And you have the proper economic interpretation of this result, yeah? The true effect of five hundred percent increase in price will be between these two in these two boundaries, yeah, in this interval with 95% confidence level or probability, uh, sorry, not confidence with 95% pro probability okay, B B B says uh, look at Column two, and column one, and we need to decide whether using a size is better than using ln size. So in column one, regression is ln price is equal to intercept plus size. In column two, ln price is equal to intercept plus ln size. Sorry, ln price. Yeah. And LN. So we have log lean and log log model. Yeah, log lean and log log model. Which one is better? Should we hold on to this? Yeah, which <laughs> log log or log lean? Which one would you want to uh, settle on? 
check? Yeah, how do you check? That's what I want to know. It's already there. The results are there. You just need to decide which model should be used for further inference. So, how would you interpret this 0 0.69 effect of log size? What, what's, what would you put on your paper, let's say, question paper? Log log model coefficients are interpreted as percentage increase and percentage effect. Yeah? Unlike log lean, where unit increase leads to percentage increase. Here, it's percentage increase leads to percentage increase. So, 69% increase in size will lead to Sorry, unit increase in, not unit, 1% increase in size will lead to a 69% increase in prices, right? These are, right away, price, these are elasticities. Interpret as elasticities, yeah? Okay, it's not about, the question is not about it. It's about which model should we settle on? Which is better? Anyone? We use, sorry? Yeah, that, that's a different issue, though. That's when you have time series and you want to sort of normalize the variance in time series, yes. Take the log of the linearized, I should say. Take the log of the variable. But if you want to work out the growth rates, yeah, then log, yeah, log differences. That's a different topic, though. But in this case, log is it's a cross-sectional data. You have different houses, different prices. So the variance is too high at some point and maybe too low price variance. So taking log linearizes. So that's why we have logs. And the same with the size. However, the question is, how would you decide whether log lean is better or log log better? Whether column 1 is better or than column 2 or, or the opposite? It's in your lecture notes. <coughs> and it says, look at adjusted R squared. The higher the better. In the adjusted R squared, line here, you see the row of adjust R squared, column 2 has 0 0.74. So 74% of variation in price is being explained by variation in the factors in column 2, right? While 72 is, is for this. And notice why this is. We have pool, view, condition, into, for, in both of these models, we have these control variables already there. The only difference between the two is the size and LN size. So that Increase in the R squared is coming from including LN size instead of size, right? So we go with that. As a benchmark, we use uh, adjusted R squared among the variables here. We're looking at adjusted. So log log model is better than log lean. Column two is better. In other words, column two is our final model, not better. It's a final model. Okay, C. Maybe you will help me to do the C. At least there are two questions. One is what is the effect of estimated effect of pool on price? Que uh, second is construct a 95% confidence interval. So if you could do first one, what is the effect of pool on price? And give me the full commentary, full interpretation, please. Oh, it's actually there. You just uh, interpret so that result. Unit, the pool. Uh, we're looking at column two, aren't we? So this is the val uh, value of the coefficient system we're looking at. It it's a dummy variable. Pool is a dummy variable. So if there was a pool, the price would be about 7%. Yeah, that's good. So. On average, so you have to write it in, in a proper economics context, right? Economic context. So in this case, on average, houses with a pool will have 7.1% higher prices than houses without the pool. Holding everything as constant. Holding everything as constant, yes. Or you can have another comment, you know, just saying the word effect. Yeah, effect of house with a pool. Sorry, effect of on price the having a pool is 7.1%. Right, and constructing 95% confidence interval is not that difficult, is it? It's just like, okay, let's, let's write it down. Because I, I thought I would save time, but let's do that. So when you construct 95% confidence intervals, or any confidence interval, you, you use the fractions before. So when you're calculating all this, 
use the fractions, variables, uh, coefficient estimates as, as given. That result, yeah, with a 95% probability, the true value will be between these two bands, yeah, confidence bands. D, now. Ah, why do you think, is it? Yeah, 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 no, sorry, I'm reading D again, yeah. The regression in column 3 adds the number of bedrooms to the regression. How large is the estimated effect of an additional bedroom? Easy one, isn't it? Yes? So how large is it, guys? Is it? Okay, there's zero. Additional bedroom, holding everything as constant, on average, increase the price by 0.36%, yeah? So it's holding everything as constant. Um, is the effect significant statistically? So you have to do T stat, yeah? What's the standard error? And at the 5% level, critical value for a two-sided test is 1.96. And because T critical is greater than T stat, what do we do? Fail to reject, yeah? H null. And what was H null? Beta 2, isn't it, this one? So is this variable if, uh, important? No? Why do you think no? It could be zero, isn't it? Because you, you fail to reject beta 2 equal to zero hypothesis. So effect is not statistically significant. Yeah? It's a minimal effect. And why do you think the estimated effect is so small? Economic effect is so small. What variable is important in that? Model size, yeah, isn't it size? If you have, if we are holding that constant, if you have a big room, uh, sorry, a big house like five, five bedroom house in Kensington, additional bedroom doesn't as, as uh, doesn't add significant price effects, right? But if you have a three bedroom house and you extend it to, <laughs> with an additional bedroom, the effect will be large, yeah. But because it's a cross section of data, so it has large and small. But we're holding them constant in this case, regardless of the size, basically. Just adding a, so uh, adding the uh, adding the bedroom to the house is, will have a very small effect, and it's statistically not significant. Okay. E. Is the quadratic term e in the regression important? It's column four. We're looking at column four. Column four. Anyone? Is this important? What 
<laughs> nice. Yeah, these are the words that you have to look at. Importance of a variable uh, or a term in the model regression is usually. Uh, Why it's gone because of zero, zero, five. Yeah, okay. It's usually <laughs> checked by looking at t statistic. Calculate t statistic for this variable, sorry, for this coefficient estimate. And you will see that this t statistic is less than 1.96. So E T stat is equal to 0 0.0078 over standard error of that coefficient estimate is 0 0.5. Something like this, yeah? And it's less than 1.96. We fail to reject the null hypothesis. And again, our null hypothesis is this. Some beta k here. I don't know what which one it is. One to third, so beta three. That's beta three. Beta three equal to zero. Yes, it could be, given the null hypothesis. It's not significant. Class five now. For class five, we'll have to download. We'll have to download the uh, CA school database data set. Sorry from the Cream Plus Econometrics 2 page. So can you do that please quickly and then read the question? I'll start doing the theory part. There's a little bit of transformation we have to do now. Right, we've done something like this before, uh, last week especially. Uh, transformation of variable uh, model. So class five one a. It says we are given this model. Test scores. STR student teacher ratio, PCTEL, English language learners, number of English language learners, I think, or fraction of them. Anyway, now what we need to do is estimate the transformed regression so that you can use a t, st t statistic to test these hypotheses. Now, hypothesis is this beta 1, which is this thing here is equal to 2 beta 2, which is this one here. Alternatively, two-sided, it is not. Now, it's important that you understand what we're trying to do here. There are two beta ones, uh, betas, yeah? Two coefficient estimates. So we won't be able to do t right away. For t test, we have to have one coefficient estimate. It's an individual coefficient yeah, you have to transform it so that you, you, you just test using a T statistic. Yep, that's something like this. We can do this, yeah? We can call this some gamma as last week, yeah? Like last week we did. So let's do that then. TS equals beta 0 plus beta 1. STR minus, because we need 2 beta 2 now here, and then a common factor of STR, we just take away beta 2 STR and add the same thing. We didn't lose anything. We have our original model still. UI. Don't forget to put the I's. It's a cross-sectional data, so I's eyes for variables. Now, <coughs> let's put the bracket right here and right there. Then, we will have something interesting here. Oh, that's zero. Plus. We have common terms, str. This is minus.
And here the common term is beta 2. Plus ui. And we know that this could be gamma. Also, we know that this could be some other variable, yeah? Some of these two variables. Let's say wi. As before. And gamma for coefficient. Now, this is our population model, new one. We just need to estimate it now. And all we need to do is this. Gamma hat. Standard error gamma hat. Estimations, yeah? So we need to estimate using this uh, sample. This is the population model. And using sample, we can estimate this. And we are given the data. It's called CA schools. And I told you to download it. I don't know if you have downloaded it already. Yeah? If not, then you have to just keep an eye on the board. So we'll, we'll do that now. Let's go. Open that in eViews. Open that in eViews. Look what we want to do. We want to estimate this regression model. Look at the board, please, and try to understand what we're doing, and the rest will be easy. So we need to run TSI on STR and W. We don't have W here. Notice that we don't have W in the list. We have STR, we have test scores, we have PCT EL, EL PCT in this case, yeah? But we don't have W, so what we're going to do is we generate a series, series, sorry, which will be 2STR I plus PCTEL and this will be our WI and we need to calculate or estimate gamma then so we go back we need to create WI here so go to quick generate series generate series and type W equal to 2 times STR plus PCTEL. But in this list, it's actually ELPCT. So type ELPCT. Hit OK now. Yeah, click OK. Check if you have the W variable W now. I have it. This is the one, and I have the equation. I have the uh, equation as well. The way I generated it. So it's a new variable. Right. We have the W now using this transformation. All we need to do is now run this regression using a sample of 420 observations. So you go back quick, estimate equation, and here type test score. So that is test, and I should get, yeah, this is this one, test, str, str, w, and c4 intercept. Next is now, as usual, we have to make sure that we have heteroscedasticity, robust, Huber-wide standard errors, yeah? from options you just choose that now click OK now don't change that you go back to original I think your model is wrong go back what do you have in there have a look board take a look at the board rewrite that whatever you have if there is an error in your eView stuff that's because you mistyped misspelled the uh, variables or your W is not created properly done it
Okay now. Now we have the coefficient for STR that is gamma 0 0.198 and we have the standard error for that coefficient estimate. You just need to plug them in here. So your T stat is 0 0.198 over what was it? Thank you. And this will be 0 0.45 I think as far as I remember. That will be T stat which is actually on the on the coefficient uh, sorry equation output if you go back this one here t stat is already there and the p value for this t stat is 0 0.65 now the question is do we reject the null hypothesis which says gamma equal to 0 which is actually which again is what do you think? Do we reject it? No, we fail to reject because T stat is less than 1.96. Yeah? We re we fail to reject. We, we, we accept. Okay, we don't accept usually, but we say we accept just for you to understand. So we fail to reject the null hypothesis. As a result, the conclusion is that effect of... So this is the important part, guys. Effect of STR on test scores is twice as high as the effect of PCTEL. Yeah? What is that? <laughs> Did you read the question? What is PCTEL? Yeah, percentage of English learners in the district here. Yes? <laughs> nice, thank you. <laughs> right. Okay, so the effect is twice as high as beta 1's effect, sorry, the STR's effect is twice as high as the percentage of learners in this city on test score. Now, we can test that if this is true by looking at the original coefficient estimates. Go back to eViews. Click on estimate here. Click here. We don't don't worry about W. This is not what we want. We just use W to get this pin down this value here. So estimate. And if you go back to equation estimation menu, delete W and type E L P C T. I think yeah. English learners percentage of English learners in the district. And click OK. You see, effect of STR was supposed to be, was expected to be twice as high as the effect of LPCT, which is more or less true, right? The, it's almost twice as high, right? It should be really 1.28 here. But yeah, it's close to that. And it is not statistically significantly different from what we expected. And coefficient estimate is strong. So this holds this equality basically. Using our sample is fine. We don't reject the population effect is twice as high. Now the trouble is this is from a sample. We could take another sample of 420 people and then run the regression and you get a different result. You may reject the null hypothesis in that, yeah? But anyway, this is significant at the 5% level. Even at, is it? No. We don't know 1% level, so it is actually 1% level as well. It's a very small number. Any questions so far? So we've been doing all this theoretical stuff. Now you see it in the views as well. It's easy, isn't it? Transformation, little transformations leading, a, leading us to conclude big, make big conclusions. B now. Test the coefficient restriction directly using e views. Now, you know, we've been doing this manual stuff, and it, it's a bit confusing at times, yeah? But we could do it in eViews and ask eViews to just do this restriction using ftest. eViews helps us to do using ftest. Okay. Once you run this regression, are you on this screen that I am in, guys? I'm on, sorry. Original estimate, estimation equation? Yes? Right. Okay. Now... We would like to test this hypothesis directly using eViews, this hypothesis here, using eViews, by entering this restriction into the eViews ftest menu. Okay, go back to eViews, click view from the equation menu here, view, and go to 
coefficient diagnostics coefficient diagnostics and then click world test coefficient restrictions world test coefficient restrictions and then we have to now type this this thing beta 1 equal to do beta 2 so we're going to test that however in eviews coefficient estimates here are not betas they are called coefficients so they are C's basically so C1 is for beta 1 C bracket 1 equals 2 times C in bracket 2 so we're looking at the coefficient estimates for ELP, CT and CSTR here and notice that's exactly the same thing as beta 1 being equal to 2 beta 2 here yeah we're testing that coefficient restriction C1 and C2 so C1 is this C2 this and this is C0 but I think this is C3 in this case it's uh, in terms of ordering here okay click OK what do we get is T statistic similar to what we had before 0 0.45 and also F statistic usually F statistic is equal to T statistic squared if you square 0 0.45 you should get exactly this number that's the relationship between F and T now F statistic well look at T statistic this is less than 1.96 so you fail to reject the null hypothesis you can do this using F table as well if you look up, up up the critical value in the F table degrees of freedom 1 and degrees of freedom 2 417 you should get a large critical value and that's large obviously it will be larger than 0 0.20 so you fail to reject the null hypothesis again okay that's B now C Compute the t-statistic using the covariance matrix of parameter estimates obtained from eViews. Now, for this, however, we have to do a few things. By the way, these p-values are the same. Notes. Yeah, they are greater than 0 0.05, so we fail to reject as well again by looking at the p-value. Okay, let's go back to estimate. If you do not have question, estimate. Okay, so leave it for now. There, we will now do some transformation again or do a t-test using the original method or original regression output and we'll estimate the covariance later so let's go back and I need space here page erase everything class 5 one C we have to do now T test T statistic calculate T statistic that helps us to do this confidence interval directly using the original values rather than gamma gamma was this isn't it remember gamma was this and standard of gamma standard error of gamma was this value here And notice that we know what beta 1 and beta 2s are. Estimated beta 1 and beta 2s are from here. So I have beta 1 hat, I have beta 2 hat. The values for them is these. And also I know standard errors for each of them. What I don't know is the standard error for this thing. Yeah, we have to estimate it. That's good. SE. Is usually equal to square root of variance so it's estimated again right using the variance operator we will then get this variance of beta 1 hat minus 2 times 2 covariance of beta 1 hat and beta 2 hat plus well variance of 2 beta 2 and it's 2 is a constant so this will come out of the variance operator as square 
So square root 2 is 4. Square root of the original value, so that's it. Oh, uh, it's hard to draw a straight line. Right. Now, what's the variance of beta 1 hat? What's the covariance of this? Hmm? So we uh, skip the covariance, so we need to get and get that as well. Now, standard error of beta 1 hat is this value, right? And for the beta 2 hat, it's this one. So when you square them, you get some, some smaller number than this is now. But we need, what we need is this, guys. We need to get this covariance between one and beta 1 and beta 2. We can go back to our sample, sample, equation estimates. And if you go to view and go to covariance matrix, covariance matrix, you have the variance, covariance, coefficient matrix, of coefficient matrix, yeah? These, on the diagonals, are covariance for each beta. So, covariance for beta 1 is, is the variance for STR. So this is STR and STR. Covariance for beta 2 is ELPCT, ELPCT. Here, this point here, this, this number here. And if you really go back to est estimate and have a look, if you square this value, if you square this value, you should get this value here. You should get this value. This will be a variance of that coefficient. Now, we are not interested in this because we already know this. We are interested in this. Covariance between beta 1 hat and beta 2 hat, which is beta 1 hat is for STR, beta 2 hat is for ELPCT. So these are off diagonal. These are covariances. These are covariance value for estimates of covariances. These are estimates of covariance. They are, you see, they are the same here, the same here. It's a mirror image. Now you take this. Now that's what we need. In that case, we should have. Okay, this is covariance beta one. This would be zero point one eight seven. Oops minus 4 times, this is a negative number, isn't it? Minus 0 0.00031 plus 4 times 0 0.000, another one, 96. And all of it is, yeah, and you should get something like this. Now we have that value here, this value, which is this. And what is our beta 1 hat? So if I estimate, go back to estimate, it's this one here. This is beta 2 hat here. So use them to plug this in there. Zero point forty five. That's the final. And notice that this is exactly zero point forty five that we exact zero point forty five we had before, with just using F test and then T test, gamma, yeah, T T stat for gamma. What happened? <laughs> yeah. Four minutes. Okay. Not much left for question two. But what I do is. Uh, when you come back after your reading week, there will be a class. We'll continue there. But I'll record full video, I think, on the question two anyway. This is one, one of the important questions that might be helpful in the coming. <laughs> I don't know, but it, it, will, it will be there somewhere there <laughs> in the next few weeks. Yeah.
No, everything is important. Everything is important, obviously. Uh, anything we do here is treat them as potentially exam questions. Don't leave some of them only on this one. Yeah, keep them in mind. It could be.